there are going to be times when you want an AppSync API to be called from a Lambda function as opposed to a front-end application. Two main applications come to mind. That would be when a customer makes a payment and you want to invoke AppSync via a webhook, or if you have an image uploaded to an S3 bucket and you want to do something like resizing the image or some advanced AI stuff on it. When you do that, you oftentimes want to notify the front-end application, especially if it's going to take a while, when that process is done. Now, I have a bunch of videos already on how to set up an AppSync API, so we're really going to focus on how do you have a Lambda function call it. Now, if that sounds interesting to you, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have this directory here, and I'm just going to type in npx AWS CDK, and we'll get a fresh package set up here written in TypeScript, of course, and then we'll open this up inside of uh, VS Code once this all gets done. Okay, so we have pretty much a blank canvas here. And if I go over to my bin directory, you can see I have your typical init stuff going on. And then if I head over to my stack file, I have the default boilerplate code that sets up an SQSQ. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. Now, as with a lot of my projects, I like to start with defining an app name. There's going to be a prefix that you can have on a lot of your items here. And we're just going to call this whatever the project is called. So Lambda invoke app sync. And I'll put in YouTube right in here as well. Now, the very first thing that we are going to create is going to be our Lambda function. So I'm going to put here in this section, this is where we're going to create our services. And we have our Lambda function coming first and foremost. And if you see my videos, you know that I like to create my Lambda functions like this, where I put them in a functions directory, and then I can call it something like invoke async function, and then we'll do a slash construct.ts. Awesome. Now, creating a Lambda function in the CDK is not that big of a deal. So I'm going to paste in some code here just to show you what we have. The main things we have the imports we have the props which is obviously going to take in the app name that we defined earlier but the core of it is going to be this node.js function nothing too crazy going on do make sure that to note that we're using node.js 18 because we're cool and we're waiting for node 20 to come out next up i'm going to create the main file uh we're going to call this handler it looks like we're defining it right there i'm going to create this main.ts and put in some code to get us started with and there we go it's a little anticlimactic, but we're going to do exports.handler leave us some space to call app sync and then log out any errors inside of here. Cool. Now let's go ahead and probably invoke this inside of our actual stack file so we can get things going here. I'm going to say const and then we'll just call this, you know, invoke app sync function. And we're going to set this equal to whatever we called that. Was it create? Was it invoke? There we go. And the only prop that it takes in is going to be, whoops, the app name. Cool. So we got that looking good. I can get rid of the sidebar here. And we've done this in other videos before, but let's go ahead and create the API just for posterity. A lot of this I'm going to bring in from an existing project because I have plenty of videos on how to create an AppSync API. But if you want to check those out, feel free. Let's go ahead and create this right here, though. We're going to say API slash, we'll call this AppSync.ts, just like so. And I'm going to paste in the code that we have. Let's walk through it, though. But we have the props. It's going to take in the API name or the app name, it needs to know the function that we're working with basically to grant those permissions. And then the core of any app sync API is going to be this L2 construct right here. Okay, so the name, we have to tell it where is our schema, we'll create that in just a moment. And then we'll set the default authorization mode to be IAM. Keep in mind, we're in like a real app. I don't know, you may or may not want this to be cognito and then just have a secondary authorization mode. I think you can, where is it? additional authorization modes right here? You may want that to be Cognito. You might want to flip them. It's up to you. It doesn't actually make a difference too much. Field log level, let's go ahead and enable logging in case you ever did want to console.log some things. And then because I have other videos on DynamoDB, I just have a none data source. It basically says, don't persist the data anywhere. We're not going to DynamoDB. We're not going to some RDS instance. Instead, uh, don't send it anywhere. Pass me a payload and I will return the result. It's like a, a ping pong type of deal. The real Fun stuff is that on this none data source, we're going to call it parrot message. Basically, if you give me a message and from Lambda or anywhere, I'm going to just respond back is what we're implying here. Granted, we haven't wired this up at all, but we're just defining it right here. I'm going to go ahead and create that schema just to keep things moving. So we're going to say API, new file, and then we'll have a schema.graphql right inside of there. And again, nothing too fancy here. Every app sync request, or well, GraphQL API in general per the spec needs at least a query. Uh, so we're just going to have this here, even though we're not using it. And then we'll call this broadcast message. It's going to take in that message to basically send back. 
and it's going to return a string, which as I just said, it's going to be the same message. So let's define this parrot message function. So we'll call this parrot message that JS. And again, if you look up the none resolver documentation, you have to pass it as a payload. That's the one sort of thing to keep in mind here. Oftentimes you can get away with just passing the data that you want. None resolvers, it takes in a payload. Cool. Now, what else? What else? What else? We have this. I think that's good for now. Let's go ahead and bring this into our project. I got some files to save. And I'm going to say const, and we'll just call this our API equals, what is it? Create app sync API. Cool. Uh, it's going to take in the scope and it's going to take in those two things, the app name, in addition to the invoke app sync function, just like that. So things are shaping up pretty well. The one thing that we don't have though, is the ability for our app sync API. Let me just double check here. We have this, but it doesn't have the ability to let our Lambda function call it. We never gave it those permissions. Let me show you how we do that real quick. We're going to go over to our app sync API, write it down here. Now this is looking pretty good, but we don't have any permissions set. We're not allowing, even though we have IAM set up as like the ability to authorize things. We never told it specifically that we want this Lambda function to be a part of that group. It's simple enough. I'm going to have a separate section here, just where I dictate like additional auth behavior and add in some environment variables. And we're going to have these right here. We have our API and we are going to add in two environment variables to our Lambda function. I'll show you why in just a moment, but in that body of the Lambda function, we're going to give it the region. We're going to give it the app sync API URL. Nothing too crazy there. And the cool thing about this L2 construct is that you can grant operations on queries, mutations, or specific operations if you want, because there's an API dot grant, which is the general one, or you can allow access to each sort of individual operation there. Pretty cool. But that's all we had to do to give it permissions. Now let's go ahead and wire up the code so that our Lambda function is actually calling our app sync API. What I'm going to do is come over here and we're going to create a utility. And the reason why we have to create this utility is because there is this mechanism when you have IAM permissions being used, which is called SIG v4. It's a way to authorize things using a signed request. Now, typically for a lot of stuff, AppSync will take care of this for you. But in our case, we don't have that ability because this is a, a custom way, right? We're defining a Lambda function and giving it the ability to talk to AppSync. That's not anything out of the box. So we're going to go ahead and create that. Now this is, let me preface here. This is going to look ugly and I know it is, but fortunately I've commented it. We're going to walk through it. And the best part is that you never actually have to touch it again. I've copied this over from 10 different projects and it just works. So let's bring this inside of this sort of function directory and I'll show you what's going on here. I'm going to go ahead and import these real quick and then we'll talk about it. Okay, cool. I got those imported. And we have the types here, operation config and the requ uh, request params, which is just a wrapper around the config and the operation. We'll take a peek at those in just a moment. But essentially what we're doing is we're saying, hey, I have this app sync request for IAM, okay? It's gonna take in the URL. I need to deconstruct that URL into its various points. We have the host, we have the path name, we have all that good stuff, right? The bits of the URL, nothing too crazy. Now there's this SIG v4 mechanism which will automatically create sort of a signer. And you have to tell it though, what you're signing. This is a Lambda function trying to sign a request, right? We're gonna say, hey, we're trying to sign AppSync. It knows what this is. We're gonna give it the region where we're trying to sign this. And then you give it the encryption method, SHA-256. Similar to JWT, right? From here, we have an HTTP request. This is like the low level Node.js HTTP request. Request to be signed. This right here, we're giving it the bits and pieces of the endpoint. Nothing too crazy. And then you actually sign the request. You have the signer. It's going to sign it using that low level HTTP method. And now we say, now that we have a signed request, you can do whatever you want. In our case, we want to take in an app sync operation and fetch that request on my behalf. Technically, I didn't have to put it in this file, but because it's a nice wrapper, I chose to stick it in here anyways. It's going to go ahead and do that. It's going to go ahead and fetch our request. Bear in mind that we still have to make sure we pass it our params. We have to give it the operation specifically that we're working with. And this operation is going to be the name and a query in addition to any variables in case it's a mutation. Cool. 
Sounds confusing. Again, like I copy and paste this from every single project. So you never actually have to work with it, but now you have it. Let's go ahead and instead of talking about it, let's just use it and see how this makes sense. Now to do that, I'm going to open up my editor. I'm going to head to this uh, main.ts file. Remember it said try to call AppSync? Let's go ahead and import some things in here. Mainly that AppSync request, we can bring in that utility and note what it's taking in. It's taking in the operation name. I'm going to call this broadcast message. I usually just put a capital B in terms of what I'm going to name it. But this broadcast message doesn't exist yet. Neither does the broadcast message mutation variables. We have to create those. Now, fortunately, we can create those pretty easily. If I head over to my terminal, I'm going to CD, whoops, I'm going to CD into my schema directory. So I'll drag this over here, get rid of this schema part right there and hit enter. And then from here, I can say MPX at AWS Amplify, a CLI. And then I'm going to run a uh, code gen add. And this will look at my schema and generate the types for me. Like I say, JavaScript, that's a React application. It's probably going to be in TypeScript. Now it says source GraphQL, yada, yada. You can hit enter here. I'm going to call this code gen and then slash, you know, everything slash dot TS. Do I want to generate everything? Yes. Default is fine. And then it'll do the same thing here. This is just something I like to do. You can of course keep it however you want but I'll keep all of those the same. And the reason why I do that is because I want this code gen directory to be created. Why do I have two? Oh, it, okay. That was like a silly mistake. I just added mine instead of here. I'm going to move it. It looks like this is the right one. So I'm going to take this, stick in an E. Let me fix this real quick. Okay, cool. I got that renamed over in my .graphql config file though. Anytime where I put in the wrong name, Codgen, let's go ahead and fix those just so that way, if I ever redeploy and re-instantiate CodeGen, it'll create things in the correct place. But now that I have those, I should be able to bring that in and bring that in. And all that CodeGen command did was look at my schema and create the types and the operations for me. I could have done it by hand. I just, why would you do it when you can do it for you? And with that in place, I believe we have everything we need to call our AppSync API. Let's talk about this real quick. This is an asynchronous function right? We're bringing an app sync and we're requesting it to be signed with IAM permissions. We gave it IAM permissions over in our main.ts file, or sorry, our stack file right here. Nice. And then to authorize the actual operation, we also tied it into our uh, GraphQL schema. And then lastly, we enabled this to all be possible over in our app sync API by setting it as an authorization mode. So there's a couple of different moving pieces here, but again, it's copy and paste at the end of the day. Next up, over in that main file, we're telling it the operation that we want. We're passing it in. This got code gen for us. And then why is this event.message, right? Because it knows that it's a message here. We can say event.message. Reason being is because we told it to. Over in our GraphQL schema, we said, hey, when you call this broadcast message, you have to pass me a message field, which is a string. So we're going to go ahead and do that right here. Now, if we get a successful response back from AppSync, then we will be able to uh, view that inside of here. It should be like response.data, all that good stuff, right? Now, uh, this is git ignored because this is a TypeScript project. So I am going to head over to my dot git ignore and just say, hey, anything in the lib slash API, can I do this? Like anything called JavaScript? Oh, nice. That worked. So we're going to take this. You can deploy it to GitHub uh, for safekeeping, but I do have a repo in the description in case you want to check that out as well. Let's deploy this and test it out, and then we'll call this good to go. I'm going to head back up to my main directory here and run npx aws cdk deploy, pass it in my profile. All right, so we're going to kick that off. Let me make some space here so you can see the permissions that are going to pop up. And I swear this is like video number five, and I'm I'm going to learn one of these days. But because I'm using a Node.js package, npm i es build. Technically, you can use Docker if you have that installed. But why use Docker? We can just install es build. So that takes care of that, and let's go ahead and redeploy. Great, we can see our permissions set up inside of here. Nothing too crazy. We have our Lambda being created. In addition to the associated roles, the main one that you want to be looking for is we give it the ability to invoke the mutation. So you have AppSync GraphQL right here. You can see it's being tied in right there, specifically on the types mutation slash star. You can say yes to this, and then we'll go ahead and test this out in the AWS console once everything is deployed. 
Okay, so far so good. Looks like 68 seconds had passed. Let's clear this out. Head over to the AWS console and I already have this pulled up. Now, what you want to do is head down to test. There we go. And you need to give your event a name. We can call this sample, call it whatever you want. The main point is that you have an event dot message. So this is JSON, so we'll do it like that. And we can say hello from Focus Otter. You know, drop a comment and like and subscribe. Cool, so we have it just like that. Now, when I come down here to test this out, we wanna make sure that we save this and we can click on test, see what happens here. And we have our details. Great, dropping down here. And then you can see our actual result. Now, this is just the event that we're logging out, but this is the part from AppSync. This is the AppSync response. We zoom in on this. We have a response dot body. Inside of that body, we have a stringified data broadcast message. And then you have our message right there. And there you go. All right, so something quick and dirty. Hopefully you like that and it wasn't too much trouble. Again, a lot of the configuration stuff is boilerplate. So once you've done it, you're literally just copying these things over from project to project. And that is the great appeal of infrastructure as code. If you like this video, check out my other AppSync content. But as always, my name is Focus Otter and I'll check you all next time. Peace.